4 a.m. This is the way to start the day. Ten K nailed it. The only way to take a shower in the Algarve, and that's cold. Ice crystals. Cold shower did it. Here's to a healthy smoothie. Mm. I never have a drink without a flower in it. Well, that certainly isn't my world and I don't know if I'd really want it to be my world either. Um, I don't think I've got it in me to even run 10k in the morning. I don't even think I could run down the drive. But um, good for those that do. But no, my real world starts. Um, I actually did wake up at half past five. Um, and that wasn't really through choice. I just woke up at half past five this morning and I then got up at quarter to seven and I made Spencer and Abe some porridge um, before they went off at half past seven. Now, what really happens with me, um, I have a cup of tea and I stay in bed till probably nine o'clock for the simple reason is these houses are jolly cold. Um, they're really, 
it's really strange because it can be cold outside and when you come in it's quite warm but when it gets to evening time um, you do notice the drop in the temperature and our pellet burner has actually decided to conk out two weeks ago and we're still waiting for it to be repaired which is not good news for us because it's February apparently they've got a month which means it could be another two weeks um, I love the pellet burner it wasn't a cheap investment it was 1500 euros um, it shouldn't have broken down the ignition has gone on it and we're having to wait a month maybe for it to be fixed yeah we've had um, like a month of everything breaking um, the Ariston boiler that we bought in the kitchen um, it wasn't cheap either that was 450 euros that decided to break down but Abe did manage to fix it um, Abe had um, a strimmer which was new again not cheap and that stopped working so that's gone off to be repaired and then on Sunday um, Abe and Spence had bought a karcher and that decided to break down and that was 500 euro so we've just had um, a month of everything breaking um, but customer service here um, in the past usually we've had people out in like a couple of days so we was quite shocked to learn that it was going to take up to a month but apparently that's the policy the more I think about it I think in the ruin I think we should actually buy a wood stove and be as off-grid as possible because of these issues with the wood stove I mean what does go wrong you know it's um and we've got loads of wood anyway that needs chopping up and storing so I think that's what we're gonna do but yeah, I just I hope you like my little um, spoofy bit. Um, yeah, reality of living here um, is quite diff different as some people may portray that they do gardening in white clothes, um, life like that. I mean, the, the one thing that I would say about living on the farm as well is if you have any white clothes, once they go in the washing machine, if they go in with anything else which has got a slight bit of mud on it, everything just turns a dirty colour and it's really hard to get out of your clothes. So um, doing gardening in white isn't a good idea. Well, not for me anyway. So I have actually been putting off and putting off planting some potatoes because, believe it or not, um, we've been here for five years and I'm actually feeling cold. It's 16 degrees, which is not cold, but it's got um, quite a, a chilly wind to it. So I have been putting off going out and digging up um, the ground to actually um, put the potato potatoes in but it's actually going to be 19 degrees today so I've got to do that I've got to put some monge to and peas that I've been putting off for a, about a week I've got to try and put them in and um, I really do need to crack on with that today plus I need to clean the house so I do have so to so this is the real me um, I need to dig up this patch and put potatoes in it's quite solid so I keep doing a bit and then coming back to it the next day um, but it really does need breaking up um, Abe did it with his tractor um, in the summertime but it's compacted down again so really have to give it a lot of goes before I actually get potatoes in.
it's a totally different day to yesterday. It is cloudy and I started my day like every day, which is washing up, cleaning, tidying up. But I thought oh, I'm not going to bore you with that. Um, so it's tidy for us, let's just say it's tidy for us. Um, now, what I'm going to do, well, I, I did yesterday manage to plant um, the Monge 2 and the peas, but I did quite a naughty thing. I actually did plant them in the polytunnel because it was just so easier. Um, the ground seems so hard at the moment. Um, oh, I've just noticed quite a large spider. It's one of those. They look like daddy long legs, um, but it's lived here for quite a while, so I'm not going to move it. And you know what I have to do? So I planted the monster and peas in the polytunnel, which is a bit of a cheat because the soil is really soft. I had about 100 of them, so I'm, uh, I did actually manage to plant them, but I need to stake them. So I'm going to do that a little bit later. But I thought I would just take you on a little walk around the farm and just show you today um, what's happening here in Portugal in the Algarve. And one thing that has amazed me about this farm, and I didn't even know this at the time because it was August time when we first saw it, was the abundance of wildflowers. Um, which is amazing. So I will show you. Well, let's see what we can find. We're going to have a little walk down the driveway and then we're going to walk along the perimeter. make out um, all the new carobs that are forming. Last year this tree behind me is a carob tree and last year we hadn't got any carobs off it at all. This year it looks like it's a bumper crop. Um, sadly the carob prices really went down um, last year and they were fetching between 10 to even 4 5 euros for a 15 kilo bag so a bag takes you at least two hours to fill so it just wasn't worth our while to actually um, pick the carobs the year before they were going from anything from 20 to 75 a bag so it's just a shame that we've got all these carobs and we haven't even um, sold them yet. They're still in the garage. So we'll have to see what the prices are this year before we even start to even contemplate picking them because it is back breaking the work. This is my favourite bit of the land and I have actually bought a really large tent 
that I have to put up this year. Um, I'm going to put it in this section and it's absolutely fabulous. It's a six metre circular tent uh, for anybody that fancies coming down and camping. Um, I think this is just a beautiful area. Um, our neighbour, you might be able to tell his field, he's used um, weed killer to get rid of all his weeds. Obviously, he's been doing it for years and um, I'm sure he hasn't got the time um, between the picking the oranges and lemons to bother about weeds and that. But you can see the difference in the land. His land's really scorched and we've just got an abundance of wildlife and bees in our land. So, but come May, June, it will all have died back anyway. The positive um, side of it is that we get his wildlife. Uh, we get his bees and we get all the insects. I'm sure we, we've got more of abundance of wildlife on our land than he does on his and I'm sure he doesn't want the wildlife what we've got um, but we're quite happy to have it. cups of flour. Two teaspoons of instant yeast. And two teaspoons of salt. I use the Himalayan salt. It wasn't quite a teaspoon. There we go. And one and a half cups of water. Mix it with a wooden spoon. Just till you get all the water into the flour mixture then there's nothing like using your hands in bread get your hands in there so what I've done I've added some olives and also some garlic that I've actually been marinating um, for a few days actually and that is looking pretty good so I'm going to leave it a few hours and then we're going to pop it in the oven and the garlic pieces right so we'll leave that for a little while
we are doing is we're not putting a steel concrete foundation down on this property here because it's a lot of rigmarole. So we're going to do it the old fashioned way, but we're going to bind the stones in without using earth. We're going to be using sand and cement to give a good solid foundation which should be below ground level and built up. And then we're going to build the step going on with a membrane so the building is going to be a little bit raised off by about half a metre off the floor, which we'll be showing you how to do. the wall that um, Abe and Spencer are rebuilding it did have a crack in it and I think I dragged it down with the tractor so um, I think they've done a really good job on it there is one thing that I love about this time of year and I think it's 28th of February today I'm sat out and it is in the shade about 24 degrees and it's absolutely glorious um come summer july august september you can't even sit out here during the day it's so hot um i've got the sun in my eyes it's just beautiful just listening to the birds in fact i've had my i've had my um merlin bird app which i love i don't get paid for saying that um, and it's picked up um, goldfinches, house sparrow, Eurasian magpie, Eurasian blackbird, collared dove, green finch and a Eurasian wren. But we have lots of different birds here. Um, huge variety. Um, Iberian woodpeckers, owls, tawny owls, little owls egrets yeah it's lovely so me and my mum came into the polytunnel just to have a little look around and uh, i discovered three little eggs three Sh little white before eggs you dis disturb it i think we yeah. should just show them show them so these are the three white eggs we've found. They're either lizards or snakes. And they could be snakes because I think snake eggs are white, but... Oh. So, I'm thinking that they could be snake eggs, maybe. 
because they are white and usually snake eggs are white. But yeah. um, they could also be lizard eggs as well. But, hang on, let me get round here. Yeah. That's it. There's only one way to test what kind of eggs they are. You're not opening that, are you? No. Oh, good. There's only one way to test what eggs they are. <laughs> You're a twat, aren't you? You're a twat. <laughs> it's a chocolate egg. <laughs> you bastard. So, so got you. So got you. Cambry's egg. Mm. Cambry, Cambry's lizard snake egg. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes nice anyway. Thank you for watching and if you could like and maybe leave a comment in um, the comment section of what you'd like to see more of, um, what you'd like to see less of um, and if you could subscribe to our channel that would really be great because a lot more people view the channel than are actually subscribed and we we don't get an awful lot of money for doing the YouTube videos but every bit helps and we do want to get this fencing up um, at one point. Um, we have got some exciting things coming up, hoping to finish the ruin by the summer time and Spencer's going away to Amsterdam with his egg this weekend um, but we do want to show you um, some progress with the ruin thank you for watching and until next time <laughs>